Each time you level up and no rest for the wicked, you get three points to increase your stats, but don't go spending them all in one go because we've got some tips for you. Fresh meat! Hey, my name's Nathan, this is the Future Game Show, and we've managed to get some early hands-on time with no rest for the wicked. A new souls light from Moon Studios, the brilliant minds behind the stunning Ori series. I've put three and a half hours into the game already, and combined with the rest of the FGS team, we've managed to log about six hours in the early preview build. So I'm here to give you some tips to help you get the best start in the game. If you have any questions about no rest for the wicked, then drop them in the comments, and we'll try to respond to as many of them as possible, but only if you're subscribed. Ah, nah, I'm only joking, we'll answer all of you, but go on, you may as well subscribe while you're down there. Only takes two seconds. Anyway, back to no rest for the wicked. Number one, bank your skills. Like I said, when you level up in this game, you get three stat points to dish out to your respective skills, but I suggest you don't spend them all at once and instead start to build up a little bank of skill points. You see, in this game, the weapons and armor you find have an element of randomness to them. One playthrough, you might find a decent set of daggers at the start, and in another playthrough, you might find a heavy warhammer or a claymore in the same location. Each weapon will require a minimum skill level and a certain attribute to wield and there's no worse feeling than finding an amazing weapon and then realising you don't have the skills to equip it. Honestly, that should be illegal. So, hold on to one or two skill points each time you level up so that when you do find your new favourite weapon, you can use that little bank of skills to test it out straight away. Well, yeah, that's 2024 for you. We're here talking about saving skill points when our parents were saving money to buy an actual house. Ah oh well, to be fair, it is a very cool hammer. Number two, pay attention to stat buffs. Just because that shiny bit of loot you just nabbed has a green arrow pointing up in the stats, it doesn't mean you should immediately equip it without a second thought. Keep an eye out for blue and purple items that come with buffs and sometimes debuffs that can completely change your playstyle. For example, take a look at this awful shield I find, I mean, it hurts my eyes just to look at, but with each hit of that shield, deadly splinters fly off into the eyes of my enemy. So with each successful block, I'm dealing damage to them, so I take my words back, this is actually a beautiful shield, I love it dearly. It even helped me finish off this mini boss without even a swing of my sword. Not the most satisfying or dignified way to end an epic battle, but you know, I came out alive and that's all that matters. So check those stats, buffs and debuffs and use the weapons and armors that are going to help your playstyle the most, even if they don't have the biggest number attached to them. Number three, the art style and camera perspective can help and also hinder you. This game is stunning. From its painterly style cutscenes to the horrifying lightning crashing offshore, but when you're exploring, take your time to analyze the environment as often Hidden loot and pathways can be hard to spot due to the camera perspective and dark, brooding world. I played through the two hour preview twice and while I felt I was being thorough my first time around, on my second run, I found the opening area to be almost twice as big as I'd initially thought. If you see a wooden beam or a fallen tree, chances are you can climb across it to find some shiny goodies. And be warned, there's no yellow paint highlighting your way in this game, so keep an eye out for those vines that allow you to scale walls and reach places that you could easily miss. Number four, be aggressive. At the top of this video, I called this game a Souls Light, and that's because some of the mechanics are more forgiving than your average Souls game. For example, enemies don't respawn and no rest for the wicked when you die or rest at a bonfire. And yeah, I know they're not bonfires, but uh, let's face it, they are. They're all bonfires, every single one of them. But like most Souls games, dealing with a group of enemies can often be overwhelming. So sometimes your best bet is to charge in, not with the intention of defeating every enemy in the group, but singling one out and focusing on taking that one specifically down. Even if the kamikaze mission does end in your death, if you manage to take down one or two enemies, that means they won't be there when you come back to that section again. So you're, you're chipping away at each encounter and making it easier and easier for when you return. Number five, use your items. In the heat of battle, it's often easy to forget to use your items. And in this game, grenades and weapon oils are super effective, so try and keep them in mind when you're dealing with those overwhelming odds. But more than that, recipes are not learned automatically when you find them or buy them from a vendor. You have to tab over into your inventory and use the recipe in order to learn it and then be able to cook that delicious meal at any campfire you find. 
And becoming the number one chef in the land is an aspiration well worth pursuing, as meals are your best way to heal up during combat, and eating a curry is far more fulfilling than just helping yourself to a raw mushroom. Sorry Mario, I don't, no disrespect. You can also carry as many meals and ingredients as you like too, so your healing items are only limited by your scavenging abilities, but you can't cook up the best ones until you find another campfire. Number 6. Use the environment to your advantage. This one might be obvious, but as you traverse the ruined castles and daunting cliff sides of no rest for the wicked, occasionally you'll have the opportunity to best a nasty foe by using your brain instead of your brawn. And let me tell you, there is nothing more satisfying than knocking an enemy that is much, much stronger than yourself off a cliff into the sea. But be warned, because it's easy enough for them to do the same to you. You know, karma is, karma is a boyfriend. Karma is the man that kicks you off the side of a cliff too. Number seven, take it all in. And finally, just take your time. Take in the wonderful vistas of No Rest for the Wicked. As I previously said, this game is stunning and haunting. And if you take the time to rest up and enjoy the view, then who knows what shiny chest or horrendous beast you might spot off in the distance. Oh, th that's your mum? Oh, sorry, I, that's my mistake. I thought it was a horrific beast, forgive me. So there you go, a few things that might help you in your first few hours with no rest for the wicked. If you have any questions, please do stick them down in the comments below and why not check out some of the other great stuff we have on the FGS channel too. Like this video I did on the fantastic Children of the Sun, the Sniper Elite Hotline Miami crossover we never knew we needed in our lives. Hopefully you enjoy that. But anyway, thanks for listening. I'll see you soon.